Hey, thanks for being here. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 191 is with Dolce Sloan and Josh Johnson from the podcast Hold Up. Good. How about you? Absolutely fantastic. Been looking forward to this because I I just love the way that you guys banter. I mean, you have mastered the art of taking things that we can all relate with and turn it into something that I'm either going to agree with or argue with. And, And you're getting emotion from my side of it. I mean, I'm I'm glad because I feel like sometimes when I'm arguing with Dulce, there's there's a there's an aspect. Okay, this is the thing. Because she has more charisma than I do, I feel like I get left, in, and my arguments get left sometimes in, by the wayside because people are just so they they like her energy, they like what she say, and I'm I'm out here giving points. I'm out here giving truth, and a lot of the people don't see it. A lot of people don't understand it. You know, so I appreciate that someone is out here being like, Josh is really holding his own. That means a lot to me. Yeah, but Dulce is the first one to tell you that you you have this tendency of always being wrong. That's not true, but like, (laughs) I feel like now you've actually sort of sided with her, especially for the people. You know, we got to give equal time to both of us. And I feel like right now. Anything yet. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I didn't know I was stepping into, like, a sort of hostile territory <laughs> where somebody else was already on your side before I showed up. Because I, what what are we even talking about? And now my man is saying I'm wrong. About what? We haven't even got there yet. Listen, and I hope, I hope people can hear me dancing. You know what I mean? Like, I hope people can just hear, like, can I just... really don't like how happy this makes you. Like, if anything, this is, this is an ambush. I, you know... I hopped on these radio waves to sort of spread some light <laughs> and some joy, and all I'm feeling is uh, is side swipes from either direction. <laughs> what this is is an intervention. You know what I mean? Like we are here to help you. <laughs> we support you. We love you. Um, we just want to make sure that you are finally seeing the light, Joshua. That you are really. You know, just walking with Jesus in these moments. <laughs> you, what just... an ambush! <laughs> like, it, like this is crazy. This is like, this is like when we had Roy on, and then Roy was just side with you out of nowhere, and it, it's like I can't, I can't be by myself in, <laughs> in all of these scenarios. This is wild. To, but you have to understand, like Roy was, si- Roy was siding with me, with soon to be Negro spiritual, knock a few buck. Roy was siding with me because he has felt, I don't know if this was because me and Roy are, because Roy's older than me and I'm older than you, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I don't know it's because you've never felt the joy and elation and the energy of being in a club when Nuck If You But came on, or also being in a club and someone announces, we're not putting on Nuck If You But, we just got new furniture. You understand what I'm saying? Like just the energy, just the way a room comes alive when the song comes on. I've it, I've seen the room come alive and I've left because it was too alive <laughs> and it's not and it's not the type of alive that I like. It's the alive that leads to death. Because well, that makes me feel like when a song headbusters comes on, you're not putting your fist in the palm of your other hand. No, no, I'm not. That's, no. That's is there's not there's that chaotic that tear the club up kind of like i feel like in the early 2000s you were like this is not a time of music for me i'm gonna stay home as (laughs) as opposed to me where i'm out we're not only am i here for the english i'm also here for the spanish version of tear the club up we are out here we are living everybody has on sneakers you see what i'm saying like you're in a club and a girl has sneakers on you're about to have a great time but you also might have to run it at the end of the night. But it was free to get in anyway. You knew what you you know what you're doing, right? So mm-hmm. it's like there's just that joy. So like that's where Roy was coming from. It's not just the song itself. It's this is a memory. Um, I keep hearing the kids on the internet say a core memory. Like that's a core. Like that's something I can like immediately. That song goes back, comes on, I'm immediately like, transported to like college, being out in Atlanta. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know if it's because you were in Louisiana. I don't know if it's because you've ever, you know, never been in a situation where someone has stepped on your sneakers. I don't know, bro. 
But like, <laughs> I, I, no, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you why I don't feel the way you feel is because I've been in those situations and it did didn't feel great. Yeah, I mean, didn't, didn't feel particularly uh, safe. And so, so I had I had out. Just leave. I'm like, I don't really need this part of my life. If I'm saying nowhere is safe, right? I live in that place at all times. Nowhere is safe. So if I'm not gonna be safe, there might as well be a beat on it. You know, like I might as well have a soundtrack to my game. I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying conscious rap has done beautiful things for the for the community and the culture that I feel like you just don't appreciate. Oh. I, I told you, like I said before, I don't want to listen to school over a beat. I understand the point of conscious rap. This is to inform people who might not always be up to date on the goings on in the world. But <laughs> in PR, since I was a child, Okay, I know too, uh, very very uh, very much knowing of the Terry Gross, you know, mm -hmm. very much of a Science Friday. All right, you know, all of the all of the programming that is brought to you by National Public Radio and PBS. Okay, I okay. learn things. I know things. I don't need someone to teach me over a beat. That's what we <laughs> are. Okay. I have all my book learning. I have all my education coming from the from the points that you're supposed to be getting education.s Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm putting on music, I'm here to shake something. I'm here to enjoy myself. You know, maybe be a little aggressive. Maybe be soft. Doesn't matter how we. Doesn't matter what we're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm here to have, and having fun does not mean. Somebody telling me very slowly <laughs> what's going on. I just, it's the pacing. It's like, also, I must say that I hate spoken word. Whoa, right? wow. I don't understand it. I don't get it. This is just poetry or maybe rapping. Right. right. A weird little space. I don't understand. And so I don't like spoken word and the cadence of a lot of social conscious rap is a spoken word cadence, and I am always going to dislike it. Now, because... is the reason the reason why that you don't like spoken word is the reason why I don't like listening to lyrics of songs? I just want to hear the rhythm. It sounds like you you would prefer jazz or an instrumental over a, a music. No one said anything wild like that. No, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm I'm back on Team Josh. <laughs> no. Finally, somebody. <laughs> I can't just take my ass to jazz or it's the slowest twerk anyone's ever seen. Have I been challenged to twerk to this woman's work by Maxwell? Yes, I have. Hmm. Did I do it? Yes, I did. Because I'm a good Christian woman and I'm out here in these streets. Okay? But the other thing is it's like the turn of phrase that you can get in a Gucci Mane song mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is hilarious. Like that's the other reason. Like socially conscious rap is never funny. It's never like I'm not I'm not hearing something that is absolutely just unnecessarily ridiculous. And a lot of times if I'm listening to just regular rap music, I'm gonna hear something that's going to make me laugh. Truly. Like mm -hmm. there's this Gucci Man has a song called Nonchalant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a line in the song in the strip club chilling so nonchalant because all these, you know, hoes bleed once a month. And I was like, what the hell does that have to do? With anything. With no, anything. no. I'm and in it, agreement. It definitely sounds it, like someone who's not reading. No, and it's hilarious. Like, why? Or, you know, they got this other song, um, the one with Drake, and it said, I've got so many felonies, I might can't never go to Canada, but Drake said he's going to pull some strings so let me check my calendar. It's like, Drake cannot get you <sighs> in Canada. No, I'm with you. Like, I'm with you. Awesome. Drake does not have the pull. Mm -hmm. Like Canada won't let you in with the DUI from ten years ago. We've all been to JFL. We've seen friends get left at the border. You see what I'm saying? There's yeah. No yeah. Way that Drake has the pull to call. Who's gonna call Trudeau to get Gucci Mane into Canada? But like it's little things like that where I'm like these. 
I mean, I can tell you right now, Justin Trudeau would be very excited to get a call from Drake. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Just, Justin Trudeau would uh, would put on his tightest do rag that he definitely owns, and he would he would press that phone to his ear like you've never seen before. My bad. Oh, he's got is. Murphy's in a do rag in the back for situations just like this. He's got his way fresh. Like, Trudeau, what are we doing out here, right? I mean, if he has six Aladdin costumes, I'm sure he has a couple of do rags. <laughs> oh, absolutely. He puts a fez on. You're like, you're doing too much. You, go, you went too far. You went too far. You went too far. You're so, just too excited. <laughs> just too excited. But it's just, it's a wild statement. And what I love is a wild, out of left field. You've talked to me before. Mm hmm. I love a wild statement. I'm never gonna hear something like that in a socially conscious song. It's just, you're not gonna hear something just completely unnecessary. Like for what? For who? Hmm. What? You gotta <laughs> teach me something. Don't you man think that it, it, Drake can get him into Canada? Like, mm -hmm. sounds like he needs to be taught something. <laughs> no, because guess what? Check his tour dates. That man got him to Canada. You understand? Like. So it's stuff like that. I'm just like, I just want to have fun. I don't want to learn nothing from some high pitched man whose dreads look dirty. Like I'm not. I'm <laughs> good. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this this collaboration did it did it happen on the set where you guys a subject would come up and all of a sudden 35, 40, 50 minutes later you guys were still on the subject just busting tail. I mean. Yeah. We don't keep a timer, but I'll I'll go until I feel like my point has been made. Right. <laughs> well, go until a point is made. Um, we've literally been talking about the song Nook If You Book for years now. Um, I definitely tagged him in something yesterday in my stories about that song. Um, I mean, we even went, we went for quite a while. I think we went for the whole day. Remember the time that little guy got tackled? Oh. This is years ago, but that little guy got tackled. He was all upset, and then somebody tackled him to like calm him down. And then you were like, "Oh yeah, he needed to be tackled." I was like, "That man is little. You can't just be tackling people that are that little." How little are we talking about? Like clinical little, or just a short man? Mm, <laughs> it's hard to tell. He was pretty little in the video. Because like, if we're going like clinical little. I mean, honestly, anybody can get it. Like, if you're amped, <laughs> I feel like this is what you said at the time, and I was like, anybody <laughs> is a stretch. Like, anybody. <laughs> like, it's, you're an adult. You pay bills. Like, if you're, <clears throat> I'm not saying everyone, I'm not saying I want to see everyone tapped. I'm just saying that you, <laughs> Everyone should have the opportunity. You know, it's like college. Like college isn't the, isn't for everybody, but everyone should have the opportunity to go. So I'm not saying tackling is for everyone. Uh -huh. I'm just saying anybody yeah. can get tackled. Like if you were out here getting to the point where somebody had to go, I gotta tackle this person. Like people are just tackling people. I mean, like, you never know. I mean, this dude, this dude was regular size. He, he, he honestly, he had to really stay in the hut to tackle. All I'm saying is you're amped up to a point where someone has gone, I got to tackle, tackle this dude. That's on you. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen plenty of people angry. I've seen plenty of people kick. I have seen people thrown out of a club like they are jazz on the Fresh Prince. Just, ah! Like we've all seen people just talk. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of door guys, right? Because I like a giant man. So... Sometimes we gotta get tossed. Sometimes people have to get just moved quickly in a situation because they are offering some type of threat. So, listen, in the words of mob wife Trina DeVanza. Jeez. <laughs> Your quotes are like. <laughs> also, shout out to the Ange. Um, in the words of mob wife Trina DeVanza. People want to act like violence is not the answer. But it is. Like, let's stop playing this game. <laughs> let's stop playing. Sometimes you got to tackle somebody. Let's stop playing this game. Like, I'm so tired. Like, 
Remember they were growing up, they're like, oh, if somebody hits you, then you go and tell the teacher. You go and tell the teacher, and then the teacher's like, don't hit them again. And then this person hits you again. It's like, now it's me and you. (laughs) (laughs) It's what I'm supposed to do. You, the questions weren't enough for you to stop what the hell you were doing. So now Mm. I'm going to get detention. I'm not going to get suspended, but I might get in school. Like, you have decided. <laughs> I'm gonna spill it. I'm gonna be that wild, but it's like you have decided to keep, you know, threatening my person and coming into my space, and I have to create a boundary. So if you're being tackled, someone is going, "Hey, listen, your behavior is not acceptable for this particular venue, and we're gonna have to show you that we're gonna have to correct this behavior." So. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it does sound a little bit like you're taking the side of the aggressor too heavily, but I, hey, hey, I, I understand what you're saying. But he was, he was also so little that he was never going to be able to do anything. He might be able to bite some, some knee, but like, I am never, I'm never going to say someone is too little to cause damage. <laughs> See, this, re- this reminds me of, of martial arts in the way that as a black belt, you know, we, we lower our, our teaching to, to the level that we're, we're teaching. And so, but when a blue belt thinks that they're a black belt, you, you have to take them out. I mean, there, 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 there's a discussion first with, with the Sabadim, and then we go ahead and put some black belt action on them. See, and you <laughs> put some black belt action on them. <laughs> it's such a funny. We put... <laughs> I'm not gonna you... lie. I'll tell you right now. Uh, this is uh, this is not. This is probably not the best story to share because it does kind of, um, it does kind of lean into Dulce's point a little bit. But there was what <laughs> there was one time where outside of the. Uh, like dojo that I trained at when I was a little kid, like itty bitty Josh. Uh, there was a guy watching us, um, you know, like watching the kids because they have those glass windows that people want to come in and want to train, right? Mm-hmm. And there I was did a, not agree with that whatsoever. This dude rolls up, not bothering anybody, just is, is watching a cat copy in the moves, like, yeah, 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 <laughs> right? And then this dude. Uh, who was in there, one of the teachers is like, don't worry about it. I'll go get rid of him. And then even the other teachers are like, he not really doing anything. Like, yeah, I have, he's like, nah, I got it. And so then he goes outside and now nobody can actually hear what's happening because it's through the glass. But we see the miming of like him motioning for the guy to like, get out of here, get out of here. Right. The guy just looks super offended. Like he's like, what did I do? Like his his hands are up and his shoulders are up in the shrug of what did I do? Right. And then the the. (laughs) Cry teacher looks back into the dojo, looks at all the kids as like nods like it's about to go down and then he <laughs> takes a stance on this dude like a full karate stance and then goes to kick him dude catches the kick no right mm. like just catches the kick but doesn't even he catches the kick out of reflex like this person clearly doesn't know karate but catches a kick out of reflex looks at the leg and then looks at him just super offended now he's like you tried to kick me <laughs> and then he grabs his gi and just shook him. No. He just shook shook him as hard as he could, right? Just, that's a little bit of that you could hear through the glass was the blah! Like, <laughs> just shook him, shook him, and then threw him down. And the dude gets up, comes back in the dojo, other dude walks off, and he hilariously had like one drop of blood <laughs> from his nose to his gi and then just tried to keep teaching like nothing happened. Like, <laughs> you have to quit now. You have to you, quit. I think you have to trade with that dude. I think that yeah. now that dude needs to be the karate teacher. Yeah. <laughs> this was like, like, but again, it's that's one of those like you jumped off the porch situations. Like, you could have easily left that man alone. That man yeah. was just doing, you know, just children learning martial arts. And who knew? Like, there's another comic, uh, Dino. He was talking about he got in a fight one time. This guy was trying to fight him, but the man, the guy just ended up kind of like grabbing him by the waist and just shaking him. But he's like, oh, one yeah, of- yeah. <laughs> right. He's like, one, I've never had a man grab me by the waist. And then two, the- <laughs> Same height, so they're like, 
They're both almost six feet tall. They're looking at each other both in the eye. And this man has them on the waist and just shook them. And then they both were like, okay, I think we we should have just fought. Because that was just- <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I think we messed up the fight. I, I think, think we, we can't. <laughs> but when you tell that, like, you can't breathe because the idea of just a grown man shaking another grown man, like, by the gi, it's like, hey, man, like, calm down. Because mm-hmm. she tried to kick me, but, like, just the man having, like, just by the waist is such a wild idea and a wild concept. But it's like, these, so these are the type of commerce. One, I love talking to Josh because Josh is always going to have a story, yep. a wild ass story. Like the one he just, like, I've never heard the story about the gi situation. Cause you know, <laughs> <laughs> Like a bottle of like a bottle of champagne. Like never seen it. Like never heard it. So that's like I think that's one of the reasons that like the show came to us and was like, hey, would y'all want to do this podcast? Because like we've just been having these conversations because like when we have these times between the, at the show where it's like, okay, the script is already done, we already have rehearsal, but we haven't taped yet. So it could be a window of like two, three, maybe four hours if they're still working on stuff. That's when I would be like, where Josh? <laughs> <laughs> the number of times I've just popped my head in his office and been like, where Josh? And he's like, the um, other guy in his office like, I don't know. Oh my God. Or it's, um, there was one day where every black person who worked at Daily Show was coming in Josh's office. So it started like with me. And there was like one other writer, and then another writer, and then another writer, and then Roy, and then hair and makeup artist. So it's like, but um, Devin, who, shout out to Devin, he's always at the barbecue. Um, yeah. <laughs> every time he would leave, he would be like, there's a new black person here every time I would leave. Like at one point, someone was like sitting on somebody's desk, and I was like, y'all need to get a bigger office, because this is not gonna accommodate yeah uh, yeah <laughs> all of us to be in here but it would just have those conversations where it's like oh i need backup so basically i would be talking about something and jo- and then you know the other guy that's in the office and like okay he's on josh's side and i was like nope i need backup so then i was like yo come to josh's office and then somebody comes in on my side and they're like nope so basically it's like we're just pulling people in <laughs> to defend our side of the conversation and then Devin just kind of sitting there going, hey, I don't want to take sides here. But if we remember, Devin was usually on my side. <laughs> but that's, I feel like that's what you do, though. You you uh, rope people in with a smile and with charisma. And then I'm I'm trying to come through with like 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 real points and just real. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to get to your soul. I'm trying to get to the to the core of the argument. And I feel like you rope people in with a, a lot of the of the of the charm. And so then I lose people that I feel like I should have had, you know. And th- and that's every reason why this podcast is incredible. I'm so sorry to to Bill that we we've gone overboard, but I want to talk to you guys more in the future. I'm going to reach out to you because I love this collaboration of you two. I love listening to you and I love watching you. So, but but please let's get back together again. Yeah, sounds good. Great to chat with you. You bet. Yeah, Josh is in a full on attack. He said that I don't point. <laughs> I'm just fun to agree with. Wow. <laughs> what a attack. Now I know how I now I know how you feel when you say what, what an attack. Now I get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. right. You guys be brilliant today, okay? You too. Thank Have you. a good one.